Um, All right, so let's get started. We're going to have some awesome stories shared today and inspiration for you to start the new year right. And I hope you're having a great start to your 2023. I'm still trying to figure out what year it is. I keep trying to say 2022. It's 2023. I don't know how, but it's 2023. So here we go. We having a baby this year. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Um, her nursery is going to be right there. My office is temporary. This is not, this is actually the guest bedroom, long story, but I'll be moving my office at some point once the office room is painted on the other side of the house. But um, we are really excited for this year. Um, I have already like set my goals and um, I haven't done my dream board yet, but I really don't have that much to change. I've chosen my word kind of figured out like what I need to live by this year, what personal changes I needed to make. I just, I've done a lot of self-reflecting and if you haven't done that yet, you need to. And I think that today's call will kind of inspire you to do that. Maybe give you some things to think about, give you some inspiration for sure if you're struggling and, um, I just think it's going to be really good. So what are y'all doing in 2023? What are your goals? What's your word? What's your, um, your, a lot of you don't do a word. You'll do like a, a quote or a Bible verse or something you're really striving to live by. For me, it's perspective. And I'm carrying that every time I plan a word for the year, it's based off of like me sitting down, self-reflecting, Reflecting on the past year, thinking about where my downfalls were, what wasn't what I wanted it to be, what I was good at, what slacked off, um, what I need to work on personal development wise, and the things you need to work on personal development wise are going to be carried over into your business, into your being a consultant, into your customer care, into your leadership it all starts with you, your mindset, your personal growth. And so when you're really thinking about your word or whatever you're going to live by for the year, think about that. Start with you. The rest is going to fall into place once you figure out what you need to work on. So, um, but I'm cheering for all of you. I know that this is going to be a great year. I know we've been in a funky time, like the past almost year, I guess since like April, May is when it just got all weird. And um, we started experiencing things as consultants and leaders that we've never experienced before because we came out of a hyper growth period, which was absolutely not normal. So if you joined in 2020, just know that the years of 2020 and 21 were not normal for Cincy. That is not what you should be comparing to anymore because that was something that just came out of nowhere. It happened. It, ha it happened the way it did. It was it was great, but it was not normal. And I think a lot of people got used to that and then started realizing, dang, this is getting hard because things that were working then aren't working anymore. And it's because it was just a weird, different time. It wasn't a typical time for our businesses. So now we're getting back to the nitty gritty. We're getting back to the basics. We're getting back to you need to be partying. You need to be in person as much as possible. You need to be networking. You need to be meeting new people in person. You need to be hustling. Back eight years ago when I joined, that's what we had to do. And I think a lot of people have got used to like, I can post on social media and, and run my business like that. And that's just not the case. It's all about connection. It's all about relationship building. It's all about talking to people and having conversations. And that is something I slacked off on last year as well. So I fell into that too. So it's not just other people it's I'm talking about myself as well so um yeah but I'm gonna have I don't really care who goes first Hannah you want to go first I just threw you on the bus sorry <laughs> let's see where are you at thanks I appreciate that, that. <laughs> and just introduce yourself tell us a little bit about who you are and share your story share I don't know what you're going to share. Share whatever you want to share. We need to hear it. Hey, um, I'm Hannah, and I am uh, super nervous. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Morgan, for um, uh, 
uh, asking me to come on and do this, but I am nervous. Okay, so y'all just bear with me. And if I look down a lot, it's my story, I guess, really kind of began uh, 2021. I actually joined back in 2012 and I stopped selling. Um, I don't really know the reason why I stopped selling. I just, you know, it wasn't like working for me at the time or whatever. So I reinstated back in 2021. <clears throat> and, um, but uh, I want to talk to y'all a little bit about your goals for 2023. And um, I, I'll just start. <laughs> so take a minute and ask yourself, do my habits and my actions match my goals? If not, um, if they're not matching and if they're not, if your actions are not matching your goals, then you need to have an honest conversation with, your with yourself. Sorry, let me mute that. With how you're showing up for your goals. Um, how is your relationship with your goals? Um, are you the first person? Uh, this is me, okay? <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest, this is me. I'm the first person in line grabbing a new planner. Um, and then what? And then that's it. Like, you know, you don't, you, you have goals and you plan for your goals, but you never, um, you don't meet them. You don't exceed them. Um, that's it. Like, that's literally all you do is you just plan for your goals, but you don't meet them or you don't exceed them. Um, but we place more value in the planning until it gets gritty. Goals are great until they get gritty and then it gets hard. Okay. Setting a goal is estimating how much time, steps, and effort it takes to get there. It's an educated guess, and it's okay to reevaluate and readjust. Sometimes we put too much pressure on a goal, a goal, and, and then if we miss that goal, we're ready to quit and throw in the towel. Can I get a witness? Like, who has been there? I'm just going to be straight up. Like, that's me. Like, um you know, with this incentive coming up um, last year, and it, it's so crazy because last year I literally had level three, but I didn't have the sponsoring points. This year I have sponsoring points, but I don't have level three. I'm still like 18,000 away. And so my goal was to hit level three, but I mean, that's okay. Just because I didn't hit that goal doesn't mean I'm a failure. So um, all that means is that you were, that you underestimated the value, time, or energy that was required in meeting that goal. You're not a failure. You are capable of achieving your biggest goals. So, um, we have to find joy in our journey or the process, but the journey is where the grit is. It's where it gets hard. And it's also where the motivation drops because motivation only brings you how far, like so far. Why? Well, because life happens. And this is the grit, the hard. And if you don't have the desire that outweighs the grit, then you're going to quit. The only thing that keeps you going is your hunger for your why. If you don't have the hunger, you're going to quit. You're going to negotiate with yourself or talk yourself out of saying, eh, I tried it. I didn't make any sales. So I'm out. We have all been there y'all it's not just you I promise we have all been there um we all have tough times so we can't use that as a cop out and just throw in the towel every time life gets tough so how do we stay consistent through the hard times through the grit if we find joy if we only find joy in the outcome we're going to be finding ourselves comparing to others and <laughs> Let me tell y'all, and we all know this, but comparison is what? The thief of joy. And I'm going to be honest, I've been there. Literally, just this past couple of months have been like struggle bust for me. And I'm just going to be honest. Um, I was comparing myself to somebody else and to other people. And, you know, just because they were getting paid at title and I'm not getting paid at title, like there's like a, you know, this thing in my mind that I have to be the best that I can be for myself. And that's good. But like when you're comparing it to other people, um, that's going to, that's going to get you to 
depression that's going to get you to gloom and doom. Um, so currently, I'm in director Q status, y'all, and I'm like not happy about it, but that's where I'm at, and I hate it there, but I'm, I've been there for the umpteenth time, but I can't compare myself to somebody else who's getting paid a title or who has a better, you know, a, a more people on their team or anything like that. Like, I cannot compare. Um, I can't because I can only do what I can do. Um, but I was depressed. I wanted to give up. I wanted to throw the towel in and say, eh, I tried, but I'm not good enough. I just can't do it. Um, hello. We all need wake up calls sometimes. And um, my wake up call was that I have put in way too much work, way too much time, way too much effort, way too much energy to just throw in the towel and quit. Like it was just, you know, that was my wake up call. So, um, so sometimes, like I said, we need a wake up call. We need to snap back to reality. And before we go and I do all the work to put in, look at all the people that we have helped to serve. And Morgan says it all the time that service is over paychecks and it's not about us. It's, um, if we are not enjoying the journey, we will give up and we will never meet our goal. Most people are at the point where they are hovering between starting and then motivating. And then um, they start, they quit, they get motivated, they start back again. But how do we overcome that hump and move past to a bigger picture? It's our why. Our why, our process-oriented why that creates desire with delayed goals. A process-oriented why is why we even, is when we ask ourselves, why is this important to me? So um, <clears throat> why is this important to me to stick to with this process? Like we could say it is important for us to have financial freedom or insert your own why right here. Like, why is this important for you? Um, and we would come up with all the answers, right? Um, so the most, the problem is that most people lack good reasons. And why is it important that we show up in our business even on the hard days? Why is it important to you? Our excuses outweigh the desires. Desire is something we create, generate, generate desire by reminding ourselves why we're doing what we're doing. So um, Morgan had said earlier that our, you know, about our words, and I have a word for 2023, and I'm going to share it with y'all. And my word is capable. And capable literally means to have ability or quality necessary to do or to achieve a specific thing. And so I'm going to leave you with a quote, um, and you can write this down. I didn't, this is not my quote, but I don't know who wrote it, but it says, I am capable of achieving achieving my biggest goals. So I hope that was a little bit of a help for someone. I struggled hard time because I'm so nervous, but I hope that was, um, I hope that was a help for somebody. That was great. I loved it. And I love, 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 love your word. That's like so empowering, especially if you struggle with belief in yourself or imposter syndrome, which I think we all do. I mean, who doesn't, who doesn't feel that way from time to time, at least. I think honestly, for me, the more success I've experienced, the more not incapable, but the more imposter syndrome I felt because people start to look up to you and more people follow you and people are like, you all of a sudden go to Cincy Family Reunion, you're being bombarded with people that, that know who you are. And you're like, how, why I'm not worthy of this? Like the more success you experience, I feel like the more imposter syndrome you'll experience if you don't keep that in check and keep your mindset in check and keep telling yourself those positive things like I am capable and use that in every aspect of your life. So I just wanted to throw that out there because some of you may think it gets better. It does not <laughs> unless you keep it in check. So that's something you have to, again, self-reflect on and really refocus on a lot. So um, I think we all, too, have backstories of childhood traumas or past things we've gone through that have led to things like that. Maybe our lack of confidence and our 
you know, we're too hard on ourselves or whatever yeah. our, our faults are that we may have, it usually goes back to something like that. So um, you're not your past. You you get to determine, you know, your mindset and where you go from here. And I wrote down when she was talking that um, when she was talking about motivation, like you should never expect yourself to stay motivated all the time. It's not going to happen. Nobody wakes up every single day just motivated and ready to go. Like, yes, I woke up this morning motivated and ready to go. Why? Because I knew that I was going to talk to y'all today. I was going to hear from y'all. I was going to hear your stories. Like, that is why I'm here. That is why I do what I do. And I'm not going to freaking cry. <laughs> I'm already emotional. Y'all know how emotional I am. But like, I'm pregnant now. So it's 10 times worse. And I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cry. Hold it together. But seriously, I wake up motivated when there's something like that happening or when I'm excited about what I'm going to do in my business that day. And that's the thing. You have to stay excited. You have to stay true to your why. Like she said, it always goes back to your why. And my team is a part of my why now. When I joined, it was not. It was getting out of debt. It was making money so I could take my husband on a date. It was making money so I could, you know, we could do anything extra. And just, it, it, it has evolved so much over the years and has become so much more and so much bigger. And just don't ever expect yourself to stay motivated because you're going to go through hard times. You're going to, you're going to, y'all don't even know how tough 2022 was for us. And there were so many days I didn't want to work. There were so many days I felt so stressed out, so overwhelmed. There was so much going on. It was curveball after curveball after curveball thrown at us. So many things we didn't expect to happen. We moved two times in one year. We, you know, all these things happened and I didn't want to work a lot of days, but my why is what kept me committed and commitment and discipline is what matters. Commitment and discipline, not motivation. And you're not going to get motivation from somebody else. It's not going to be an external thing. So if you're relying on a leader or someone to motivate you, then you're in the wrong, you're, you're listening to trainings for the wrong purposes. Motivation comes from within you. And I say that all the time, it's internal motivation. And that is your why that is going to keep you motivated, keep you committed, keep you disciplined. If you're not motivated, you wake up not motivated, stay committed to your goal, stay committed to a task that you need to do to move the needle. Even if it's one thing you do for your business that day, have five conversations with customers. Those are the things that move the needle in your business. So stay true to that why. Like she said, don't feel like you're supposed to be, be motivated all the time, especially if you're a leader. Don't feel like you have to be motivated all the time because everyone else is relying on you to be motivated. It's totally normal to not be motivated sometimes. There's hard seasons, there's hard times, but you cannot, you cannot stop. You have to stay committed. Okay, who's next? I'm gonna shut up now. Cassidy, you wanna go next? Sure. Good morning, everyone. Oh, God, I see myself all close up and personal. Let me move this screen back a little bit. Okay. How y'all doing? Don't look at my trash. Okay. So um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Cassidy Dupre. Um, I am the director for the Simply Scented Sisters group of teams. Um, I joined Scentsy... January 9th, actually, of 2021. So in the middle of all this hyper growth, um, it's, it's been amazing. It's almost my two year since anniversary. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but I too have struggled. Um, so I'm just going to kind of give you a little bit of my background um, and some experiences and all about my pivots over the last two years, because y'all know life has been crazy. So um, I started in January of 2021, like I said, um, and I jumped in full swing, like guns blazing. I wanted to do the dang thing. I wanted to be a director. I wanted to be a leader. Um, 
I was so passionate about this business. I still am. I shouldn't say was. Um, I just, I was on fire and ready to work and ready to just hit the ground running, right? So I did my launch party with Chelsea. Shout out to you, Chelsea, um, my friend and my sponsor. And I did $1,000 in sales in a week. I was super nervous that no one would buy for me because I had been with other network marketing companies before. Nothing really took off the way that um, Cincy did. So that was super exciting. Um, so yeah, launch party did amazing. I decided I was going to join. So she flipped that party to me. Um, and within five months of me being consistent with partying, and um, just sharing my journey with everyone, um, I promoted to director in five months. Um, so, like I said, in the middle of the hyper groove, so um, it was crazy. I was definitely a hustler. Um, and I know you've talked about, Morgan's talked about this before, like um, hustle mentality and all of that. So in my first year, just to break it down real quick and simple, I definitely burned myself out real quick. Um, I was doing everything that everybody was doing, constantly looking for the next best thing, um, and constantly trying to motivate my team to do the same. Um, but it, it was, it was great. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Um, so First year was really great. I did burn myself out. So last year, I really focused on simplifying my business, um, focusing on IPAs, cutting out all of the fluff work, um, still communicating with my team in different ways. So maybe more one-on-one -on -one communication versus trying to do a training, you know, twice a week or once a week or anything like that. Um, so for those of y'all that don't know I just became a mom um my baby girl is three months old so last year I really focused on like I said trying to simplify my life because I knew that I was stepping into this new role um it was difficult you guys um the transition is definitely not easy <laughs> I'm sure as you know a lot of you guys know you are moms um or work full-time jobs so something I've really tried to focus on um, is learning how to be okay with change, sudden change, um, your plans not working out, but still making an effort to work your business in like the a lot of times that you have. Um, so like I said, I definitely struggled um, with this because like I'm a creature of habit. I love structure. I thrive on planning things ahead of time. Um, so really like focusing on my mindset has been like extremely helpful. Um, if you guys have your days, like where you're just not motivated, you're not feeling it. Um, maybe you're just like really discouraged about your business in general. Um, I highly suggest that maybe you find a podcast that you want to listen to. Um, maybe like a topic that you're struggling with, um, Kristen Boss, I don't know if you guys know her. I mean, Morgan posts about her in the Magnificent Superstars group pretty frequently. Um, she is amazing. She has really changed my business. I mean, she hasn't changed my business, but me listening to her has really helped my mindset. She is amazing. Um, she just like kind of rebranded the podcast, but anyway, this is not about her podcast. Um, so I really like listen to her a lot. Um, I also like to go on YouTube and mm -hmm. to um, like Jennifer Anderson, um, Chloe Cox, constantly like, you know, just trying to broaden my, I guess, like my mindset. Anyway, um, so that has really helped me too um, as far as just trying to keep my mind right in the yeah Kristen Boss um I think it's actually called the Kristen Boss podcast now like she just recently changed it it was like the social selling um uh no 
she has a group called the Social Selling Academy, but that's totally different. Um, if you look up Kristen Boss on uh, Spotify or like Apple Podcasts, you'll you'll find her. And I think she also has a YouTube channel as well. Um, so yes, learning to pivot has really been my focus. Learning to um, really just work in spurts of time because I don't really have, you know, the time. I mean, again, most of you guys are moms, you know, that you know, the drill. Um, so going from working this build this business full time, um, with a full time job, and then working it only full time, and then working it full time with a newborn has been a huge adjustment. But um, I just say all of this to say that literally, if anybody can do that, if I can do this, literally anybody can do this. Um, it's it's hard work, yeah. Um, so if somebody told you that this was going to be easy, they they lied to you, boo. They lied to you. Um, but it is definitely worth it. Like Hannah and Morgan were saying, um, if your why is big enough, it will keep you going. It does not matter if you wake up in the morning and you feel like crap or you don't want to do something or you're just, you know, really feeling the couch today, you know, work while you're on the couch, work while you have, you know, doctor's appointments, work while you are doing whatever you want to do, right? But make sure you are also spending delegated time with your family, your kids. Um, this business doesn't have to be as complicated as some people make it out to be. Um, it can be really simple. It can be exactly what you want it to be. That is the beauty of it. Um, your business doesn't have to look like mine. It doesn't have to look like Hannah's. It doesn't have to look like Morgan's, right? It can be whatever you want it to be. If you don't want to be a director, that's totally fine. And you have that option. If you just want to sell $200 every 12 months, you totally can. But just know that the resources are there for you if you do change your mind. And, you know, you can do that at any time. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's see what else. I kind of had some notes, but, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not going off the notes. We just talking. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it. Also, um, something else that really has helped me, um, I change my systems like every six months. Um, I like to do like an office reset. Um, I actually just moved my desk completely around last night because I was like, you know what? I have a Zoom call tomorrow. I don't like the way this is set up. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna turn it around. Um, so if you're maybe struggling, if you don't have a workplace, maybe find some corner in your house where you can have like a little Cincy setup. Um, if you can't have a little Cincy setup, maybe just have like a little cart that you can push around your house. And when you can work, work from a table tray or like a little desk or your dining room table, whatever works for you. Um, but refresh your space, purge everything around you. Um, if you have, you know, a couple bucks and you want to go to Hobby Lobby and buy something cute for your desk, do it. Do whatever it's going to um, make you happy in your environment because that is a huge, huge, huge thing. Um, this office has been a mess for like four months. I have not worked in it in four months. This is actually my first day back in it. Um, and... I can see like already just being in here and everything's nice and clean and all of my stuff is picked up in a way um, that it really just like changes your mood. Like your environment 100% affects your like your mood and your mindset when it comes to working. So if you can delegate like a little area for you to work that is clean and like positive, definitely try to do so. Um, I really think that's it. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Yes, a total refresh. Exactly. Yes. Awesome. I'm so excited you're back in your office. That's so exciting. Yay. Yes. I'm so tired of moving my office around. Oh my goodness. I'm bad. One, one more time and it will be where it is going to be. 
<laughs> yeah. Let me replace my little spotlight. You're done, right? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. I don't want to cut you off and then you're not know, done. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, her talking about that, it it takes me back to all the offices and office spaces I've had over the years. I my first um my first office space was like an actual normal big room like this but I was so new I didn't even need I needed one little corner of that whole room that's all I had a tiny little desk I didn't need hardly anything and these like really cool organization carts I don't think these even existed back then like back then there was no you didn't order things online all the time but these carts right here if I would have had one of these for like I could have fit all of my stuff on here I just remember having my little desk with my little laptop which I honestly like nowadays you don't even need your laptop for half the stuff like back then you had to you couldn't do everything from your phone back then but um I had one little corner and then I had my starter kit box back in the other corner of the room with all my starter kit stuff and it just stuffed in there like that's all I had and I built a business to director like that um and I was a dental hygienist also and I was running an Etsy shop also and then after that um, I ended up in another little tiny, tiny room with like one little desk at a couple years into it. And then the next house, when I had my son, um, I was using his nursery as an office. So there's that. And I was doing Facebook parties in there. Um, worked on the road a lot with my husband when he drove a truck. That was before we had a kid. And I, then moved to a normal office. Then we built an office. Then we unexpectedly had to do away with that <laughs> last year. So I sold that and we bought this house. So now I'm going to have an office in a house that we own finally. So I can be in a room for as long as I want to be and not have to move this darn office anymore. But you can work wherever, however you need to work. But the key, like she said, is just have a little happy space, have little things that make you happy, like little, little pictures that make you happy. Get, get some Dollar Tree picture frames and print some pictures of things that mean a lot to you that are your why. I'm telling you right there that that makes a difference for me, just having that to look at on my desk, um, but also organization. Like even if you have a tiny little space, you can be organized and being able to know where things are at and things not being cluttered and all over the place, it will help your mind to feel not cluttered and all over the place. You need to be organized. If you need to learn how to be organized, there's YouTube videos. So um, do, do whatever you can, but be as organized as possible. All right, Kelsey, let me unmute you. Ooh, I love your sweater. Thanks. It's four sizes too big because I don't have clothes that fit me, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we're working with what we got. <clears throat> All right. So I'm Kelsey Todd. If you don't, if, if we don't know each other, um, I am director of the Southern Wax Slingers. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start with just giving you just kind of a little bit of background, um, about myself. I've been with Cincy for seven and a half years. Um, I've been a director off and on for six of those um, and a director consistently for almost three of those. Um, so I um, am, I, I don't know where everyone here is from, but I'm from uh, Crossville, Alabama. Um, and just just a little town uh, about an hour south of Huntsville. Um, I have been married for gosh almost nine years. Got two kids, um, and I am a full time stay at home mom slash Cincy consultant. Um, I was a teacher before I started Cincy. I taught special education, um, and then I got pregnant with Sophia. Ended up really sick and couldn't. Uh, work anymore because I mean I couldn't function um, as a normal human and so I resigned and thank God I had Cincy to fall back on because uh, it has been an absolute godsend um, for my family and I <clears throat> so um, I want to talk to you guys today um, about I just want to 
I just want to encourage you guys. Like I am not here to preach to you guys today. I'm not here to like teach you any type of lesson. Like I just want to fill you, everybody on this call with some type of encouragement and inspiration for the new year. Um, because I think I can probably speak for most of us when I say things have been hard. Um, 2020 was a crap show as in, you know, COVID came in, shut the world down. But 2022 was just, it was weird. Um, and it, it was hard. And especially the end of it, the end of it was just, I don't know, the end of the year last year, I've never been more ready to let a year go. Um, it, it was just a hard in, in all aspects. And, um, I think it probably has been for most of us. And so I just want to encourage you guys today. Um, when Morgan asked me to do this, I was absolutely elated because I'm in a season of my life right now where encouraging other people is like my favorite thing. I, I mean, and I, and I know you're thinking, Kelsey, that should always like it, it shouldn't be a season. But like, I feel like we we get in seasons where we need to be encouraged and seasons where we need to do the encouraging. And I'm in a season of my life right now where I want to be encouraging. Like, that's what I'm here for today. Um, so <clears throat> uh, I'm going to kind of give. I, OK, I've got a bunch of notes here. But and I'm going to try so hard to follow them because I told Morgan yesterday, I'm the world's worst at getting off on rabbit trails. And like one minute I'm on, I'm on like follow my notes and the next I'm talking about God knows what. So I'm going to try really hard because I don't want to waste any of your time. Um, but and and at, at times you may be like, where is she going with this? But for it to all kind of come together with a pretty little bow on it, I have to kind of go back to uh, 2016. So just bear with me. I have points, I promise. So um, I joined Cynthia in June of 2015, and um, I promoted to director in September of 2016. Um, <clears throat> I, I uh, stayed at director. I I really, I was sitting here making these notes last night and I was like, I have no clue how long I stayed director the first time. Um, year and a half, maybe consistently. I'm thinking about a year and a half, but again, I, I can't, I'm not really sure. Um, <clears throat> so after about that year and a half, um, I went into a director queue. Uh, I kicked the queue at some point before the three months was up. Um, and eventually though I think I only I kicked the queue the one month and didn't hit director numbers again for three months went back into the queue then I didn't promote I mean I didn't um I got demoted I, I eventually at some point demoted back down to superstar consultant when I tell you that nothing has ever felt like a bigger kick in the face um it, it hurt. I felt like at the time, I felt like all of my hard work was for nothing. Um, I felt like, <clears throat> um, I just felt like a failure. Um, then let's see. So I was superstar consultant for a while. I don't even know forever. It felt like, um, 2019, fast forward to 2019, 2019 was just an awful year. Um, it was terrible. Um, my marriage was falling apart. My business was falling apart. My finances were falling apart. Like literally every aspect of my life was in shambles or so it seemed. From the outside, people looking at, at me probably thought, oh, she's got, and I did have a good life. I don't want to say I didn't have a good life, but like on the inside, it was a disaster. I mean, um, to make matters worse, I was um, experiencing depression and anxiety like never before um I had a terrible mindset um and you're going to hear that word a lot uh while I'm talking because mindset has been a it, it's a huge thing I'll get to that um but I had the most negative mindset I was miserable to be around um I was everything was just nothing ever seemed good. Like no, I, I was always complaining, always, um, 
miserable, bitter. Like it was, I was always angry. Um, 2019 SFR in Austin, Texas was my first reunion I ever went to. And um, I went as a superstar consultant. Um, I walked the stage as a director and which everyone, like all my, all the girls that walked with like on our team, Morgan, Heather, Hannah, all of those at the time, um, they were directors and I walked with them and they were super, they were like, yeah, you should walk. You're still a director. Like the, the title doesn't say it, but um, <clears throat> looking back now, it wasn't the title that mattered. It was my actions and my actions weren't screaming leader. Um, so based off of my actions, I should have never been up there. Um, but I was terrible at, um, playing the comparison game. Hannah mentioned this already. Um, I told Morgan last night, favorite game to play. I used to, uh, that can, it is, it is such a thief of joy. Um, and I would compare myself to all of my higher ups, all of the people above me, um, and, and not even people above, I mean, people that were like the same title as me, but were more successful than me at the time. Um, I would compare myself to them and I would think, why don't I have what they've got? Why am I not making what they're making? Why yada, yada, yada. And I was too blind, um, to realize that they were all doing things drastically different they were working harder than I was they were um you know waking up earlier getting things done while I was like sleeping in until god knows what time um they were you know they had systems I had I pull things out of the you know out of my rear end still still do a lot of times and that's when things get uh chaotic um, I'm bad at systems, but I am implementing them now, which is a lot better than I was doing then. Um, <clears throat> just everything, I, I just, I couldn't figure it out then. Um, I had such a negative outlook on everything. Um, World Tour 2020 came around. It was in Nashville. Um, and it was right before the world shut down. Such a, such a wonderful time. Like, Times are so weird now. Um, and it was like the last big event we had before the world shut down. Um, I went that day. I took my husband. That's the first event he had ever been to. Um, and I had a miserable time. I did not want to be there. I played on my phone most of the time, listened to some incredible speakers, or I should say I was present. My body was there while some incredible speakers were speaking, incredible leaders, and I cannot tell you what was said. You can't tell you anything I learned that day because I was on my phone the whole time. I just did not want to be there. Again, had such a negative outlook. I just wanted to go to say that I went and to get free product. And that was that. I'm not even sure that I really mingled with any of our team that day. Um, it was terrible for me. I mean, not, I just, it, I made it that way. Um, so Aaron and I were sitting in the car after world tour and we were about to drive over to rainforest cafe and I was just sitting there real quiet and I looked at him and I said, I think I'm done. And he was like, with what, what are you, what were you doing? And I was like, no, no, no. I think I'm done with Cincy. And he just kind of looked at me and, um, he was like, okay. He was like, why, why do you think you're done? Like what, what's making you want to quit? And I was just just told him I couldn't do it anymore. I've been a superstar consultant and get back back in superstar consultant for over a year. And I just didn't have the drive and the motivation and I didn't have the fire that I used to have and yada, 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 all things that I could have, um, I could have changed myself. Like Morgan said, nobody else can motivate you. Um, and I didn't realize that at the time I was waiting for, I get probably I was waiting for somebody else to work my business for me I, I, at that time. Um, so Aaron was sitting there and um, he, he loves a good motivational speech. He loves, he loves to give them. I call them lectures. Most of the time it's um, him just wanting the best for me or he, Aaron knows my 
truest potential and he tries to bring that out of me and still to this day I'm very combative and don't listen to anything he says for the most part um but he just told me he was like look give it give it one more month don't quit now you know you just made that decision just now off of emotion give it give it a month see how March goes if you still want to quit at the end of March you know that's okay you know step back whatever I was like okay whatever like you would say that and but um he has told me in the past in the past that I was a quitter and I, I would always get so mad when he would say that and I look back at my the things that um I've started and um I look back at the amount of things that I've quit after you know when he when he told me that I'm like wow he has a point um so I gave it another month um I was emotional um, in that moment, if Aaron had not been there to be my rational thinking, I would have 100% quit Cincy right then and there. Um, one thing that I've learned through all of this is you cannot make decisions based off of emotion. Um, a lot of people, you hear it all the time, and my pastor has even talked about this. People's favorite thing to say is follow your heart. Don't do not follow your heart. If somebody looks at you and tells you to follow your heart, don't listen to them because your heart runs off of emotion and emotion is going to mislead you 110% of the time. Um, this is, I heard this quote and y'all are going to be like, wow, is she serious? So my husband and I have been binge watching Sons of Anarchy, um, which I'm in aware that that's, that we're like 10 years too late to the game. But we've been binge watching Sons of Anarchy, and I've really been doing a lot of thought to this emotion stuff lately before Morgan even asked me to do this. But last week we were watching this episode, and one of the gang leaders, this, I literally got this quote from a gang leader, but I promise you, when you hear it, you're going to be like, wow, that's a smart gang leader. Um, so it said he was giving Jax Taylor some advice. Um, you know, and they're all criminals. So, you, but this is the only time I'm going to tell you to take a criminal's advice. Um, the guy said, if emotions say now, your head has to say later. And I was like, wow, that is like exactly what, because I had just had a talk with my boot camp sisters. Like I'd gone live on our boot camp page and was like trying to give them some motivation and inspiration for the new year. I literally just gotten off that call. And he said that. And I was like, that's literally what I was just talking to them about. And I couldn't get it out in words because everybody believes the follow your heart quote so much. And so when I tell people don't follow your heart, they're kind of like, really? Is that good advice? Yes. Like this, your, your heart, your heart um, is going to lead off of emotion. And so when you make decisions based off of emotion, you're not, you're not using your brain. You're not using your, you're basing it off of how you feel in that moment and not off of uh, reality. And, and it's just when your emotions say now, your head has to say later, you have to stop um, and think about it and process. And you can't just make ras rational um, decisions. So I gave it another month. Um, and I re-promoted to director in April of 2020. I wrote April, I, I need to look back. I looked back 50 times and my brain is mush after two kids and I can't even remember anything. I feel like I re I always say March, but I wrote down April. I, I re-promoted in one of those months though. But World Tour was in February and I'm almost positive I re-promoted the month after. Anyways, the point is I re-promoted to director and I've been there since then that was in 2020 so I'm coming up on three years of consistent being paid at title of director um and for the longest I was stuck on okay gotta get star director everybody else is at star director all these people that had they joined around the same time I did or after that they were promoting a star director while I just re-promoted to director and I'm like, all right gotta get there gotta get the star director and I was playing that comparison game still I wasn't just happy and I wasn't content with the good thing that had just happened of me being director or me re-promoting re a director. I had to get the star director. And um, 
it was not time. It's still, it's still like, I'm still, um, you know, not at star director. And sometimes I think about it and I'm like, wow, I should really be at star director. But then I step back and think I will be at star director when God says, Hey, it's time for you to be a star director. And that's just my, uh, that's my personal belief at this moment. I will, I'll get there when I'm supposed to get there and where I used to be in a rush for it. Um, I, I'm not, I want more. I'm not saying that I'm content, content, like to where I don't want more out of this business because I do want more out of this business, but I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at, even though the last few months have been a struggle. And, um, so anyway, so just because I had re promoted to director, um, things weren't all perfect but just because I got my title back. I had to literally rebuild everything. Um, I had to, uh, I'm still three years later, still rebuilding. Um, there are aspects of my business that I struggle with tremendously, um, that are a huge, uh, part of, of building and rebuild and like recruiting is one I am, I really struggle in that, in that area, but where it used to, I would say, Oh man, I suck at recruiting. Now I don't say I suck at it. I struggle with it, but I work to do better at it. Um, so I had to rebuild. I was still, even though I had my title back, I was still stuck in that nasty mindset. I had this mindset of bitter. I was so bitter, y'all. Like anyone that was doing better than me. And I didn't let people know that. I actually just had a conversation with Morgan yesterday about just some bitterness and resentment I had pent up towards her. She never knew ever a bit of it um, because I never let anything on. I just, I just, I just held it in and it made, it, it just, it made for a really nasty um, mindset and environment up here. Um, so I needed a mind shift, a mindset shift. Um, and hold on just a second. I had the scripture and if you're not a Christian, that's totally okay. Um, but I base a lot of what I do off of scripture and this scripture that I want to read, it, that completely changed my mindset um, three years ago, this scripture, you don't have to be a Christian for it to fit your life. It's literally just um, a good verse. It's just good life advice for anybody. Um, so it says, finally, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Sorry, I had to pull that up on my phone because my Bible's over here and I'm stuck by this long cord. So anyways, um, so I actually got that from my therapist counselor at the time. Well, she's still my therapist, um, but uh, she sat me down and she was listening to me just complain about everything. And she said, you self-sabotage. And I was like, what are you talking about? So she was just telling me how I'm just such a negative person. And she, she had noticed even on social media, like everything I posted was just, that is in Philippians 4, um, verse 8. And um, she was like, you, and she read me this scripture. And she was like, I want you to go home and I want you to read that verse. And I want you to read it again. And then I want you to remember it the rest of your life. She was like, because you have such a negative mindset on everything. And she was like, if it's not lovely, if it's not pure, if it's not commendable, like if it's not nice, if it's grippy or angry or rude, don't post. We were, she was referring at the time to my Facebook posts. Um, and she was like, but if it's any of those things, post it. If it's not any, she was like, I mean, like if it's pure, but it's not lovely, or if it's commendable, but it's not encouraging, don't post it. Make sure it meets all of that criteria before you post it. So I took that and I applied it to my life uh, in general, not just my social media posts. I applied it to the things that I speak and um, the things that I take in. Um, I say that in here. I just admitted to watching Sons of Anarchy. I've never in my life watched a more disgusting show. Anyways, um, so uh, hold on. So I came home 
I wrote it on a note, uh, post-it note, and I put it on my mirror so that I could read it every day. Um, and my life has completely transformed. Um, and I give that Bible verse so much credit for it, um, like 95% of the credit. Um, but I, I, I will say that was three years ago and it did not happen overnight. Um, I am still working very hard to be um, the complete opposite of the person I was three years ago. Um, I, I, actually, the biggest transformation has been in the last nine months. So that's where <clears throat> I take you to the next kind of little part of my story. Um, nine months ago, I had weight loss surgery. And <clears throat> so if you didn't know me before, um, feel lucky, uh, consider yourself lucky. No, I'm kidding. Um, I did not have, I was a shell of a person I am now. Um, I was significantly overweight I don't feel like people most people have told me now which I don't think anybody's going to look at me and go yeah you are so fat but they're not going to do that but a lot of people will look at me now Aaron's best friend recently um who doesn't talk about things like that obviously like he's just not a but you know someone to bring stuff like that up and he was like you he was like I, he said I I never looked at you and thought oh man she's overweight so people wouldn't look at me and think that, but I was significantly overweight. I weighed almost 300 pounds. I was about 270 was my high. Um, and physically, I, I didn't think it was that much of a problem. I mean, like I could, I could still get around, do things, whatever. Mentally, it was dragging me down uh, to the point, to a point of no return. Like I I was, um, my gosh, I was trying new medications constantly for my depression and my anxiety. Um, I had no energy, uh, wouldn't get in the floor and play with my kids, um, let alone go outside and like get up and play with them. Um, couldn't even, I mean, just bare, like little simple things I couldn't do that I should have been able to do, like bend over and tie my shoes. And you never realize how much little things like that really affect so much of your day and your life. Because I mean, I would wake up in a good mood, but like, I mean, literally for instance, it sounds so small, but I'd bend over to tie my shoe and you know, my pants were too tight and I couldn't get my leg up and it would just tick me off and I would be in this terrible mood. And then I'd ruin everyone's day. And like this, I would let the smallest thing. So I'm still, I was still nine months ago, um, my mindset was different as far as um, I was not the negative person that I was, but my mental health was still pretty shaky. So um, I nine months ago had the weight loss surgery um, and never thought in a million years that it would change my life the way that it has both physically and mentally. Um, and I'm that, that will be like a, a talk for another time. Or like, if you have questions about that, like I'll answer them, but I don't want to focus on the weight loss surgery itself too much. Um, I want to focus on what it's done for me and how it's really helped in my mindset. So, um, and I, I had the surgery in April. I was on, I'm not sure how many, med I think I've only come off of the one medication. Anyways, I've come, but so mentally, you don't realize how much something like that affects you. Um, but when I had the weight loss surgery and started dropping the weight off, I started noticing the amounts of energy that I had. Um, I was sleeping better because I was eating better and I was, you know, doing this, doing that. Um, and so I started to see that I could set these goals and I could reach these goals like it was all possible. And so I started trying to set up daily habits. Um, I would try and set small habits, not large habits, um, to work on myself every single day. Um, I have gotten to a point, let me, let me say I've lost a hundred pounds. Um, I've lost 99, but you know, whatever, well, we're going to round up. 
So 99, I'd lost 99 as of last Friday. I weigh in every Friday. And so I'm hoping when I weigh in tomorrow, I'll, I'll have that one pound uh, completed. But um, it has changed my mindset drastically. I've gained a level of confidence that I didn't know that I had. And I'm not talking about like physically, like I'm, I don't look in the mirror and go, oh, you're hot or anything like that. I'm talking about mentally. Um, I have a confidence of who I am as a person. And I'm not telling y'all, don't get this misconstrued. Like I'm not saying anyone that like my weight determined my happiness. Um, it shouldn't be that way, but it, it all just, it all tied together because as an unhealthy person, you know, weight doesn't determine your, determine your worth or anything like that. But let's, you know, be honest, I was an unhappy, I mean, I was an unhealthy person. And so unhealthiness physically leads, can lead to the unhappiness and the depression and the, the mental strain, um, you know, because I, it, it was putting so much pressure on me in those aspects. So I was having to medicate and I was having, you know, I was overly medicated because we thought all this stuff was wrong with me. Turns out I was just overweight. Um, I do struggle with some pretty rough anxiety. We've got that under control for right now, but my anxiety doesn't necessarily cripple me quite like my depression did. And I'm not saying that I don't think depression is real. I 100% understand it's real, but I need you to understand that it was something that a lot of times I was bringing on myself. Um, and so uh, it has been a teetotally it's been a hard journey. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. I've had people say, oh, you took the easy way out. And I've never wanted to just hit somebody so hard because it's been hard. It's, it's not, you know, it's, it, it's not the easy way out. And so um, anyways, rabbit trail, um, things have been slow um, the last few months. So I had an incredible October. It was the highest PRV I'd ever had got my check in November and was like, wow, this is, I've never made that much. This is awesome. Um, and then November and December were the slowest months I've had in probably, I guess, since COVID started. Um, so yeah, three years, almost three years ago, um, they were just really slow months, but you know what the difference is three years ago when the months were this slow, I was done. I was ready to quit. I was ready to throw in the towel because my mindset was nasty. My, my negativity, I let it overwhelm me and, and determine who I was, who I, what I was going to think, how I was going to think. But things have been hard the last two months in every same aspect as the ones like things have been hard, like things are tight right now for my husband and I, he's a car salesman. And as you can imagine, um, because eggs are $32 a dozen. So people can't afford cars that much either right now. And so things are just really tight right now. And, um, you know, you've got this inflation thing going on. And so people aren't buying. I mean, I, if you're going through that right now, I get it. I relate. I promise. Um, tensions can be high in our household because of money problems. Uh, people always say money can't buy happiness, but I laugh at that sometimes. I, I know that money can't buy happiness, but sometimes I'm like, well, can it really? Because when my husband and I were like the best our marriage has ever been, that was also when money was the best it's ever been because financially for us, because we both just get so stressed out when the money, when money's super tight. And um, so then we stay at each other's throats. And so sure, money can't buy happiness, but it, definitely relieves a little bit of stress when it's there. Um, I understand that. So, but I, but, you know, aspects of my life are kind of the same as they were then financially, maritally, things like that. Things are hard. Um, but my mindset is so different and I'm like, Hey, we're going to keep on trucking. Like we're going to do this. Um, and I would like to say that, you know, if the next few months keep, keep, being hard or keep up this pattern, I would like to say, and I feel confidently, you know, in, in the fact that, um, I would still stay pretty positive about it. Um, because, uh, I have that to look back on, you know, Hannah, you were talking about earlier that you're in the queue and this is hard for you. 
Um, and I get it. I've, I, I've been there and I, I feel that so much. Um, but I didn't have anybody to look at me when I was in the queue. And then when I demoted back to, to superstar consultant, I didn't have anybody to look at me and say, Hey, um, it, well, Morgan used to say it happens, you know, it happens to all of us. It does, but Morgan, I don't think Morgan had ever, she had Morgan up and up and up and she's had her valleys obviously, but I don't think Morgan had ever personally demoted back to superstar consultant. So she couldn't relate to me in that specific area. And so I didn't have anybody that, that could say, Hey, I've, I've been there before. I've, I've done that. I did that. And it's hard and I get it, but you got to keep going. You just gotta, you gotta keep pushing. And so Hannah, I want to, to tell you, and I think I have on one of the pages, but I'm not sure. I promise you when you're looking back in one year, two years, three years, you know, however long, six months, um, when you look back on this moment of how, how much you felt like it just was going wrong, you're going to realize that you were there for a reason. Some lesson is going to come out of it, some bright idea, something. And you're going to be like, you know what? I'm glad I went through that. I'm glad that I experienced that so that I could help other people and motivate other people with my story. So keep pushing and I promise you it's going to be worth it. So, um, it's all about perspective. I've been saying that so much lately. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times a day I say, oh, it's all about perspective, no matter what type of situation that I'm in. Um, you know, my perspective then was that the world was out to get me and everything sucked. Um, and uh, now my perspective is totally different. I listened to a podcast this morning, Morgan, I, I discovered this podcast. His name's Craig Groschel. I probably butchered that. And Morgan recommended the one with Tim Tebow on it last night. So I was listening to it this morning when I was getting ready. And Tim Tebow, of all people, has played the comparison game. Um, like, who would have ever thought that beautiful man? And he, um, Groeschel. Okay, Craig Grosh, Groeschel. 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 Got it. Okay. Um he says it every time at the beginning of his podcast and I still get it wrong. Um, so Tim Tebow was talking about the comparison game this morning and he said, um, I would play the comparison game and I would be like, why do they have this? And why do they have that? And why is this person doing better? And he was like, I never sat back and thought and thank God for what I had in that moment. Like I was never thankful for what the good that was going on in my life. I, um, was never thankful or content with what I had currently. I had to have the next bigger, better thing. I had to, I wanted to have what everyone else had. I wanted to, um, you know, be the best. I wanted to do the best, but I wasn't putting in the work to do and be any of those things. I just wanted it. Um, and so I, I, I played that comparison game and it, uh, it took my joy from me. Um, so one thing that I've learned, this is my last page of notes, I'm almost done, I promise. Um, one thing that I learned through all of this, and one thing I've kind of studied over the last few months, um, they talked about this at leadership in 2018. That was before leadership was kind of combined with SFR. And I earned it for free, so I went. It was in New Orleans. And they talked about growth mindset and fixed mindset. And if you go to our training tab in the workstation, and you search growth mindset, you can pull up a lot of resources on this. Um, so growth, my I have completely gone from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. So if you have a fixed mindset, you say things like, I can't do this. Um, this work is too hard or this work is um, good enough. This is good enough for me. And this is too hard. Where a growth mindset um, Instead of saying, I can't do this, a growth mindset says, I can try a different strategy. Let me try something different and see if I can get it this way. Um, instead of this work is good enough, a growth mindset says, is this really my best work? Is this the best that I can do? Um, that's my husband. My husband is constantly trying to improve himself. And sometimes it drives me up an absolute wall. But then I have to take a step back and realize, hey, he's just trying to better himself to be a better husband, a better father a better you know provider he is literally my husband never 
is not ever not listening to some type of self-help book on audible or a podcast or something. And he begs me to listen to him daily. And I hate podcasts. I hate listening to stuff like that, but I started it the other day. It wasn't a new year's resolution or anything. I just decided to put a podcast in my AirPods while I was cleaning instead of some trash music. And, um, wow, it's been incredible so far. So, and then a fixed mindset may say, this is too hard where a growth mindset says, okay, this may take some time and effort. Like I'm going to get through this and I'm going to be able to do this, but I'm going to have to put some time and work into it. Um, you have to train your mind to be stronger than your emotions. Um, or you're going to lose yourself every single time that goes back to the emotions thing. I'm an emotional person. I don't cry a lot. But if we're being honest, that's probably because I'm medicated. I, I, I don't think that I think a lot of times my medication doesn't allow me to show true emotions, but I can still tend to be a pretty as far as I have big emotions. I have a lot of I have a big personality. And like, like when I'm passionate about I'm a passionate person. And so like I like I, I fight with passion, like I argue with passion, I grieve with passion like everything it just seems overly emotional when you're dealing with me um and I tend to get lost in that so bad and I've gotten to a point where I've learned I have to train my mind to step back and be stronger than those emotions or I'm going to end up where I was three years ago um one thing about our mindset it can either propel us forward into our dream life and keep us in a state of happiness and gratitude or it can keep us in negativity and peril and in a paralyzed state of spinning or just spinning our wheels. Um, so uh, it can either propel us forward into our dream life and help us through get into a state of happiness and gratitude, or it can do it, it one of two things. That's, I mean, literally like your mindset's going to either help you do good things or help you do bad things or, you know, cause good things, cause bad things. Um, your life is literally only as good as your mindset. Um, I sat, you know, three years ago, sat back uh, in this negative, nasty mindset and then couldn't figure out why the heck everything around me was falling apart because I sure as heck wasn't doing anything to make sure that anything good happened in my life. I mean, you know, I had my, I had an awesome husband. I had my amazing daughter at the time. Uh, I didn't have my son yet. No, I had those things. I had good things in life. Um, but I hated life. Um, I, I absolutely hated who I was and being, you know, just in the present because I was such a miserable person because of my mindset, my, my life sucked because my mindset sucked. I mean, just, you know, to put it simply for like with lack of a better word, um, it sucked because my mindset sucked. Um, where I am today is a direct reflection of the choices I made three years ago. So where you are in one year from now on January I don't even know what today is the fifth where you are a year from now on January 5th, 2024 is going to be a direct reflection of the choices you make today. Um, you can't get off of this call and say, okay, you know, Kelsey, Hannah and Cassidy said some good things, but whatever. Um, and expect your business to, to thrive after that. You have to um, get off this call and make choices, make goals, make plans, write them down, hang them up, put them on a, on a, on a dream board, whatever you have to do. Um, and then because, because when you get there next year, it's going to be so much of a reward, but when you get to January 5th next year and think, well, I'm not any further along than I was this time last year, like, well, what did you do when you got off the call, the call with, you know, me, Cassidy, Morgan, and Hannah, like, what did you do with the inspiration, the, the advice, those things that we gave you? What, what did you, did you write them down? Did you put them to work or did you mentally scrap them? You know, did you decide to uh, put systems in place? 
did you decide to uh, make actual goals and um, and impl impl implement habits, daily habits to reach those goals? Um, did you set realistic goals? That was a big thing on one of the podcasts I listened to the other day. One reason why we as humans are so bad at sticking to New Year's resolutions, me included, I'm going to set them anymore, um, is because we set the most unrealistic expectations every year. This is the first year, y'all. Toot, toot, going to toot my horn a little bit. First year in 15 years, probably, that I've never set a weight loss goal on January 1st. It's a bit, and I, I have a weight loss goal, but it's the same goal I had last year. I, I just want to get to my goal weight this year. Um, it's, I mean, I didn't set it last January 1st. I set it when I had my weight loss surgery and I'm not there yet. I didn't expect to be there before the end of last year. Um, so anyways, um, we set, um, so like at, on January 1st every year at 270 pounds, I would be like, well, I want to lose, I want to lose 150 pounds. When, where? In a year, you want to lose 150 pounds? Um, I cheated and had weight loss surgery and I haven't even lost 100 pounds in nine months. So um, someone may say, you know what? This year in 2022, 2023, just kidding. I'm going to, um, I'm going to do yoga and I'm going to do it for an hour a day. And I've never done yoga a day in my life. Why? Why not 15 minutes a day? Um, let's start out small. So that's a, another big problem. We set unrealistic goals and then we get mad because we're not reaching them. And you know, you're like, well, uh, you know, have you tried something a little smaller? <laughs> um, you know, instead of cutting unhealthy habits, instead of cutting, you know, sugar out completely, which you should do, sugar's not good for you. But instead of cutting it out completely, maybe just treat yourself every now and then. Like I see people all the time on these diets and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm starving. Like they're literally starving themselves. And they're like, I'm so hungry. And I'm like, well, you know, it's good that you're cutting out sugar and it's good that you're on a diet. But, you know, maybe it's not going to be so like they're like, well, I haven't had a brownie in a year. Why? A brownie is not going to make you gain 10 pounds. Eat a dang brownie. It's not going to kill you. Don't eat a brownie every day. But it's not going to kill you. So small daily habits is what's going to build and create. Yes, it's not sustainable or enjoyable. Somebody's calling me. How do I make this go away? Um, hold on a minute. OK, sorry. Um, Anyways, it's not sustainable or enjoyable. If you're not enjoying, you know, something, then you're not going to want to keep doing it and you're going to fail and you're going to, you know, you're going to quit. So small daily habits, implement small daily habits. I, one that I implemented this week, um, I want to start getting up earlier. I hate getting up early. Um, I started doing it, though, in August when my daughter started kindergarten. And um, I did pretty, I had to get up at 6 a.m. Um, and I thought I would be terrible at it. And I still, I'm very, don't talk to me when I wake up. Um, give me about, give me about 30 minutes. But used to, it used to be, give me about an hour. Give me two hours. I don't want to talk to you. I don't even want to see you before noon. Um, and so this week I was like, okay, I'm going to start waking up at 5.30. That's 30 minutes before I wake Sophia up. And I thought I'm going to go for a run um, every morning. Um, and then last night I was laying there and I was like, I don't want to go for a run in the morning. And Aaron was like, well, let's just go. Cause he couldn't go with me today. He does training on Thursdays at, uh, at a gym and I didn't want to run in the dark by myself. And he was like, well, just go on the days I can go with you. He's like, you don't have to run every single day. And I was like, you know what? That goes back to the small daily habits. Um, but I can still get up at five 30. And let me tell you a funny story. Side note. Um, I set my alarm for five 30 and Craig Groeschel was talking about how, you know, if you, if you want to set a goal of waking up early, don't set 15 <laughs> snoozes. Well, I'm bad about hitting snooze over and over. So I was like, I'm not even going to put a snooze on this alarm. Um, we leave the house every morning at seven o'clock to get my daughter to school. I woke up at seven Oh five to my son crying this morning. And I was like, okay, guess we're going back to a snooze button. Because a snooze gets me up. It gets me up 15 later, minutes later than, you know, normal, but it gets me up. And so I got to start small. I got to start somewhere. So the fact that I'm even setting my alarm for 530 instead of 6 o'clock, 615, whatever, that's, that's big in my world. Because um, 
I want to, on the days that I don't run, I want to get up. I have no reason to be up at 530, but I want to get up. I get no time to myself during the day unless it's that early. So I want to get up. I want to have that time to myself. I just feel like personally, I can be a more successful person if I wake up 30 minutes earlier. And if, you know, if that's what it's going to take, then I've got to start moving in, in that direction. Um, okay. So I just want you to know, kind of, kind of wrap this up that you, um, I, and I, I want you to do something. Morgan didn't tell me to give you homework, but I'm giving it to you and you don't have to show it to me, but it would be really cool if you did. If you guys posted it on the Magnificent Superstar page or, you know, wherever, that way I can see, I would like to see it if, if you decide to share. But again, you don't have to. I want you to remember, first of all, that you are the greatest project that you will ever work on, um, working on yourself. People say all the time, oh, you can't pour from an empty cup. Yes, you can. As mothers, we do it literally all the time well I can't tell you how many times I've poured from I mean like in reality sure you can't like pour from an empty like if there's nothing in a cup you can't pour from it but as a human you can it's just not fun nobody wants to it's miserable and it's draining and it's exhausting um but we have to do it a lot of times especially as parents or especially as wives or you know whatever um but Morgan used to preach to me about self-care and I would just roll my eyes and be like okay look who even has the time for that um and Morgan's like you have to make time and I'm like no um I like I wanted to act like you know my kid and my kids more are more important than me but I started doing self-care about a year ago and holy guacamole like it changed everything because when I'm loving on myself I can still, when I'm not loving on myself, I can still love my kids. But when I'm loving on myself, no matter what it is, whether it's reading a book, you know, enjoying some time to myself, reading a book or going and getting a mani-pedi or going and getting me a drink from Starbies or whatever it is, when I'm loving myself and taking care of myself, it is so much easier to take care of those people around me. I don't know why it's that way, but it is so much easier to love on and take care of the people that I need to take care of. It just makes it so much easier. You are the greatest project you will ever work on. Take care of yourself. Love on yourself. Get sticky notes. Post-it notes are my jam. Get you a post-it note. Get you 50 post-it notes and just stick them all over your mirror and leave like a little square so you can see your face to get ready. And just put encouraging quotes so you can read them every day or write a new one every day and stick it up there. I don't, I mean. Oh, Kelsey, mm -hmm. tell them about the post-it note I sent you. When I hit director. <laughs> so Morgan, I got, a, I got a, a letter. I love snail mail. I know nobody sends it anymore, really. But like, I only got like three Christmas cards this year. And it made me so sad because nobody does snail anymore. And the ones that I got, like, absolutely made my year. I was like, yes, I got cards. So anyways, and then I didn't send cards. So oops. Um, but so Morgan, I got a letter in the mail. Um, I was still a superstar consultant, like before I ever promoted the first time got a and I was like, Oh, yay! I'm like, uh, Steve from Blue Sleuths. I just got a letter. Anyway, okay, some of you may be too um, young for that, maybe. Um, I was so excited and I opened it and it's a sticky note. And I was like, what did she send me? And it says, I will hit director this month. And she left a little note in it was like, I want you to hang this up on your mirror and I want you to look at it every day and I want you to say it out loud every day, claim it, whatever. Um, and I was like, okay, that's so weird. If y'all saw my mirror currently, um, you would be like, oh God, she really does live by post-it notes. <laughs> like it's, I mean, it's not like covered, but um, I have, I, I, I swear by it because that one post-it note changed my life. I was like, it said, I will hit director by the end of September, 2000, whatever year that was, 16. And it seemed so far out of reach at the time. And I did it. You know, when I did it, I did it on September 30th, 2016 with like an hour left in the day. And um, I give so much credit to that post-it note because when we, when we put something down, when we write, I'm very much a, um, a visual person um when I see something 
I, and I focus on it, I do better that way. We don't, we all have different learning styles and that's okay, but that's my, I do better with that. Um, but I fully believe that if you write something down and hang it where you will see it every day, whether it's on your mirror or whether it's in your car on your steering wheel, like it's so much easier to claim that and manifest that or whatever you want to do with it. Like it's when you've got it, when you've got your dream board hanging above you, like my dream board is on my Pinterest. I never look at it. Like I got on my dream board a couple of weeks ago and I marked off like four things that I could have marked off four years ago. But I was like, man, I really need to print that off and hang it somewhere. So, um, when you have your goals written down or, you know, statements or positive quotes or something like that, and you're taking it in every single day, it's a game changer. Um, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to create I am statements, um, whether it's on post-it notes, note cards. Um, if you have to rip a piece of paper up and tape it to the mirror, I don't care. But I want you to create I am statements. And I'm going to do this too. I, I was going to do it last night to like show you examples. But I was like, okay, they're not done. They know what I am statements are. I want to do this with them rather than before them. So I'm going to do it with you. And so to start off your 2023, I want you to write down I am statements. And I want you to focus on self-love while you're writing those down. I don't want you to think, I don't want you to write down negative I am statements. I don't want you to write down a statement that's even going to be slightly negative. Like, I want you to think about the absolute best parts of you. I am caring. I am compassionate. I am a good leader. I am um, a good mother. I have a sticker on my mirror that says, I'm a good mama. That's an every day that motivates me. That's the one. (laughs) It motivates me every day just to be a better mother. And um, I fail almost like in some aspect uh, of motherhood, almost daily, I have to step back and reevaluate what I'm doing as a mom. But the fact that I'm stepping back and reevaluating instead of pushing forward and not realizing it is huge. Because three years ago, when I was doing the things that I was doing and making the unwise choices I was making, I didn't step back and reevaluate it. I just kept going um, because I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't care. Um, Morgan mentioned self-reflection. Self-reflection has been a huge part of my life the last eight months or so. And it's hard. It's so hard to reflect on yourself and, and change the bad habits. Um, But, and we can also be our own worst critics. And so sometimes like you have to even pull yourself from thinking too bad about just saying things too negatively about yourself. Like we all love ourselves, but then we don't love ourselves and we're women and we're hormonal. And like, it's really just a roller coaster and it's not fun sometimes. Um, so self-reflection is so important. Um, I sit, I self, I self-reflect on literally everything in my life. Um, and so I want you to do self-reflection and I want you to create, I am statements. And I want you to hang them up somewhere where you're going to see them every day. And I want you to soak in those every morning. Um, Tell yourself every single morning, I am whatever you write down. And remind yourself that you are worthy. Um, You are worthy of this business. You are worthy of being successful. You are worthy of so much that you don't think you're worthy of. And I want you to, you know what, actually, I'm going to give you your first one. I am worthy. You may like me, like I'm not, I'm not a creator. Like I'm not a creative, uh, like artsy person. So I'm not going to write down. I'm creative, but I'm worthy. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. And you're worthy too. And whether you think it or not, you are. So I want you to go ahead and write that down. I want you to hang it up because you are, um, just do it. Okay. Thanks. (laughs) Anyway, so uh, write down your I am statement, um, you know, but if you get if, if, what I wanted you to get out of this was, you know, you got to create small habits, small daily habits. You got to fix your mindset. You've got to get into a routine. All of that. I did want those are good things. I wanted you to, you know, take something from that. But if you don't take anything else from this, this 
this call, I want you to take away that you are worthy and you are good at what you do and you are strong and you can do this. You're a bad ass. Okay. And you can do this. And I want you to write those down. And if you feel like sharing, I would love to see them. If you don't, it's perfectly fine. Some of them may be personal and that's okay too. But um, yeah, that's what I want you to do. So um, my word for 2023, I've never had a word for a year before. I just, I can't ever think of one and I've just never been motivated to have one. So um, I chose one this year and I chose it like a month ago. I wasn't even thinking about a word for 2023. I just, for some reason, God kept laying it on my heart to be a more intentional person. Um, I am, I'm a, I could tend to be a flaky person when it comes to friends. I would literally make plans with friends or say, oh yeah, we need to hang out. Knowing good and well, we weren't ever going to hang out. And God kept saying, <clears throat> you need to be more intentional with the people in your life. Like, I would say things like, oh, Sophia, one day we should, you know, mommy should take you to do this or we should have just a mommy daughter today and I would never do it. And so I want to be more intentional. The definition of intentional is deliberate or done on purpose. And I was not an intentional person with my time, with, you know, my kids, with my friends. And so I want to, in 2023, I thought, you know, I guess that should just be my word because um, God has really laid it on my heart to be a more intentional person. And, you know, I want to be intentional about my time with my kids, my time with my husband my, and my time with my friends. I want to be intentional about my time with my business. Um, most of the time, I'm just pulling some random time out of the, out of the seat of my pants um, to sit down and work on my business. The last few months, I've been intentional about making sure I get whatever sensey work I need done, done while my son is napping so that sensey uh, doesn't take up time with Rhett. I'm really getting to enjoy one-on-one -on -one time with Rhett that I had with Sophia because Rhett wasn't born. And I thought, oh, Rhett's never going to get that because, you know, and then Sophia went to school and then I'm spending my time doing sensey, my time with Rhett doing sensey stuff. So I've been intentional about doing my sensey work while he's napping so that Sophia can get the same one-on-one -on -one time that she had, you know, with me, he can get that also. So you have to be intentional. I set my phone on, um, do not disturb at 9 PM every night. It's probably going earlier. Uh, but I set it on do not disturb at 9 PM every night. I was, I, my team, God love them. I love them so much. Um, but a lot of them were real bad about reaching out to me at midnight because they knew I would answer them and um or you know even if it wasn't midnight they were reaching out during mine and my husband's time and I was taking time on my phone to do that now it's on do not disturb and even if I hear it going off while I'm laying in bed I don't grab it um because or I wouldn't hear it going off because it's on or let me okay let me start that whole sentence over when I was laying in bed when it wasn't on do not disturb at midnight I would grab it because that was just instinct now I don't even hear it um, I have it set to where like, and, you know, you may be like, well, um, what if somebody's calling me and they really like, what if something bad has happened? You can set it to where only certain people get through, like only my mom, dad, and Aaron can get through. So, um, and then I figure anybody else outside of that, if they need me bad enough, they'll call Aaron's phone. That's just, you know, whatever. Um, and used to, I'd feel guilty for something like that. And I don't now I have found so much peace and, um, joy from setting it goes off at 6 a.m the next day which is when I wake up and I probably benefit from setting it on do not disturb until after Rhett wakes up honestly um because the important people can still get a hold of me like the ones they think something bad happens but um just to be able to really focus on myself while he's in bed I you know just little things like that to work on myself it's just so important y'all so I want you to create your I am statements. I want you to think, you know, what can I do to what, what daily, small daily habits can I implement into my routine to make sure that 2023 goes exactly where I am wanting it to go. And so I can reach those goals. So that is all I've got to say. So thanks for listening to me and listen to, I know I talked louder than the other, I mean, louder, longer than the others. I'm sorry if it was too long, but I feel like everything I said I just would if everything I said was something that I feel like needed to be said so hopefully you got something from it it was so so good and I did my homework wait where's oh geez
I've got to do my other ones. I think now you've given me an idea. I think I'm going to put my I am statements on my dream board because I have already decided, or actually maybe I'll stick. I can't stand to have things on my computer or I would just like stick these all around it, but I'm, I, oh, I can't stand it. Um, like I'm not even that person who will put one little reminder sticky note on the bottom because I can't stand it. I have to like stick it somewhere random on my desk. But um, I have already decided that I'm taking things off of my dream board this year, like materialistic things. So um, I'm just going to put on there what truly matters. So that's just a little decision I made. I've always had a Range Rover on there. I've always had a really nice boat on there. I'm trying to see what else I have on there. A pool area, like all of that comes when you do the important work. So I don't want to be so focused on that. And also I can't get a Range Rover anymore because now I'm having two kids and there's not enough room. So anyway, um, this call was just, so good I I can't even I don't even have any words Kelsey like I the difference in you is crazy and before you even talked about growth mindset I had chatted on here I don't know if you saw it but I had said um I was just bragging on the difference I can see you're a completely different person you have a growth mindset now and I had said that and then you started talking about growth mindset um but thank you all to all of you leaders for sharing your heart and your story today. I know a lot of the things y'all talked about was not easy to talk about. Um, I resonated with all of you in different ways. And I know that y'all had an impact on everyone on this call in some way. So you're very welcome. And this will go on YouTube. I record everything and put it on my YouTube channel. Um, so yeah. I had something I was going to end the call with, but I am going to let it end with what Kelsey ended it with because I feel like that was perfect. And I want to see y'all's homework. I want to see your I am statements. I'm going to work on my I am statements and I'm going to add them to my dream board. So I can't wait to see what y'all come up with. Whatever you want to be, whatever, whoever you aspire to be, who you want to be, that is what your I am statements need to be if like Kelsey said before she would say I'm a terrible recruiter but like if you repeat that to yourself then yes you are a terrible recruiter but guess what I slacked off on my recruiting the last two months and when I did my self-reflection which is very hard to do it's very hard to sit there and be honest with yourself when I did my self-reflection I was like wow my recruiting has been in the freaking dumps but you know what I said why has it and it's because I haven't been having the conversations I used to have, the consistent conversations, the sharing my story consistently, the um, sharing a, a tourniquet every single time I close a party. I slacked off on all those things I used to do that worked. And guess what? Three new recruits already this month and three reinstatements. And it's the fifth. So check yourself, um, write your I am statements, write out what you want to be, because you're going to look at that statement until you finally believe it. And then you're going to become that. So thank you all for being here. Thank you all for, um, to all you leaders for sharing. And I love y'all and appreciate y'all so much.